Klar. Hello and most welcome to 1948 of the H series. We will today continue St. John's Apothecary, Difference, Textuality and the Advent, Advent of Meaning by Robert M. Price. Last time we went into deferral of meaning. I'd say difference in both space and time. <laughs> that is the pharmacon. It is identical to itself, but yet it is different. It has this double sense. Both poison and medicine, healer and destroyer. And it is also this different way of referring to something. In ordinary parlance, something can refer only by being different. And a little hint of that is a very Deridian, I'd say, suggesting that the written numeral 666, while the first sentence is not correct, is not a reference to Antichrist. By definition, it is the Antichrist. It is both. It is both the pointer and the pointing thing. A double entendre that cuts across the Susurian chiasm of sign and signified. Where the sign has to be empty in order to be able, <laughs> like an empty shell, only then it can be able to point to something else. The sign needs by definition to be emptied out. So something can be full of itself and still refer. Nothing needs to be more emptied out or more originary, like the sign is to the signified. The great Big Bang or the before of everything and what's signified the end, the finitism. The thing in itself, <laughs> the very end point. Here, in contrast, something can be absolutely full, present, and still defer. No absolute borders or sharp definitions are here necessary. Maybe it's a sentence further down here that uh, I missed last time. And why not the very last one on that page? Because the open page, uh, sorry, the readable page. Because the temple was a token, a reminder of God's presence in his absence. That doesn't have to be a problem in itself either. The full presence of God can still be there in his absence. And even more so. But we continue and we are down to the <laughs> very last paragraph uh, on page 111. Mm. 
the text which pretends to reveal whether that of the revelation of St. John or any other is itself a veil. A veil, a veil. <laughs> it is like the veil that hung before the Holy of Holies in Herod's temple. It hides the fact that the inner sanctum is an empty chamber. 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 <laughs> the curtain allows the illusion that some transcendental signified awaits within within but in fact the veil itself is all that occupies the holy of holy holies the text itself is the only thing revealed. Revealed. It is a fabulous vista painted on a veil, not a transparent veil through which one sees a distant panorama. Panorama. <laughs> well, that would have been a very nice end word, wouldn't it, Kale? Panorama. But here, the text of Robert Price ends, and I will already go into some Quotes. I think once more we have this rather interesting contradiction or dichotomy. I see the text, this is the beginning of the paragraph which pretends to reveal whether that of the revelation of St. John or any other is itself a veil. It is like the veil that hung before the holies of holies in Herod's temple. It hides the fact that the inner sanctum is an empty chamber. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> the emptiness where there should be some sort of presence, logocentric fullness, the inside of the black box that should carry some intention, some meaning. No, on the contrary, the outer veil makes the holy and the emptiness of the chamber, chamber is nothing but the fullness of absence. We find the private language here. We can also go to Roland Barthes, the empire of science, where the inner sanctum of the temple or a city is empty. Always empty. And that does not indicate 
lack of meaning because the meaning is in the complexion of the veil or the outside and the inside. The curtain allows the illusion that some transcendental signified awaits within. Nothing needs to be there. We know from Wittgenstein and Derrida that in fact the veil itself is all that occupies the holy of holies. I would not say it is all, like the last term. The text itself is the only thing revealed. It's far from only. It can, in its fullness of being itself, also refer to something else. I'd say that's the only chance that it can do that. That's how it do it. It's the fullness of the sign, not an emptiness. Everything is there, fullness in absence. The emptiness is filled with presence as well. The dichotomies go into each other. A Deridian take on Saint John makes it even fuller. I say it brings forth the hidden fullness that is indicated here and make it to something more extendable, greater than we could ever have if we were to read it in the ordinary logocentric fashion. It is now opened up. Most possibly price is here opening a door with a greatness not even he can fathom. That's my suspicion anyway. What do you think, Kalle? Uh, Let me show you something. So, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, we have the famous the apocalypse and we can take the it means unveiling let me see um, so uncovering let me see uncovering like in what did you think of um It's like the um, curtain in the temple, mm -hmm. but also like the Norwegian coastline. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's folded and uh, fractal. Yeah, what well, a good one. Mm. Uh, so it's, you have and so right rights the girl that allows illusion some that some transcendental signified mm -hmm. lies within but uh, this so-called signified is already in the girl yeah indeed so it's not possible to say signified because signified also points to something else which is as, also a signifier mm. so curtain is like the veil uh, it's supposed uh, something that hides and reveals at the same time. And a uh, better illustration of the knowledge of mind. Oh, yeah, and definitely. In the fractal theory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It contains both uh, the outside and the inside in the liminal space in between us. 
mm-hmm. not in the mainland only and not in the water only, mm-hmm. but in the laminal zone, in the border zone. Yeah, exactly. Very good. And I think the in uh, was it Greek verb kalupto. Uh, so it means hide, as you can see there. Mm-hmm. And uh, apo in, in a way is the very opposite. It's the prefix, mm-hmm. uh, which means from. Aha. So it's if. Always disturbing. Um, so, so it's already this very uh, noun apocalypto. Apocalypsis, excuse me. You have the uncovering and covering uh, distinction. So, it's calypto means uh, to hide. Yeah. As you can see. Yeah. And apo means the opposite. Aha, uh-huh. apo is the opposite. Okay. So, it you can say, uh, it's, uh, roughly speaking, because it means from. Something hmm. to hide from something. Yeah. Literally speaking, uh, hide from something. Hmm. Uh, so you can imagine like a veil in front of a someone's face. Yeah. So yeah. Apo means to take it from, so to say, ah. to veil from. Ah. Oh, very good. Yeah, I like that. So this um, apocalypse is actually the perfect illustration of the Fracta theory oh, of the Norwegian coastline. Yeah. So if you somebody say, what is apocalypse? It's like the Norwegian coastline the, um, in Fracta theory. It's, uh, it's high. Uh, so I don't know if you can say it's high. Yeah, why not? Okay, why not? Why not? Okay, it's on the example because you cannot see everything. No, so, no, no, no. It hides and it uncovers at the same time. For each fold, there is an uncovering what was before. Mm. So uh, it's both covering up what was previously mm. and it's uncovering something new, uh, greater complexity, mm. depth. Oh, that was very good. I like that. So here, um, <clears throat> so this text is very Derridian, mm. but there are also things that Derrida would not agree with. No, no, I have seen it as well, yeah, yeah. That, uh, <laughs> that is so Surian. Which it makes it a, a bit, bit close to the text of Francis Wylin, where he brings in uh, translators and translocutors and uh, interpreters that do not go the whole way, mm. which is very pedagogical for us as readers. Mm. The intention wasn't that here, of course, but it still works. Mm. Sure, it's helpful for my understanding to have a text like this and bring it a bit further. Mm. Mm. Well, it was also interesting to see <clears throat> that he discusses this paradox between chapter 32 and chapter 10. Um, so, John has a vision in chapter 10. Uh-huh. Um, but then the heavenly voice says, do not write it down. Aha, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> In other words, he thought, better of a particular prophecy and struck it out of the final form. Aha, uh-huh, aha. Uh-huh. That's actually to, to you, John, uh-huh. become a hostile reader of his own text and sense of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but it's a poison in chapter 22. And first, the remedy fits in the text in chapter 10. Oh, um, indeed, yeah. very interesting. <laughs> Strike it out. <laughs> yeah, indeed.
There are a lot of those references to emptiness. The inner sanctum is an inner chamber. Uh, the person to be would be Bobby Rice. John St. John himself has done it. And uh, 666 cannot be Antichrist um, when it's referring. And then we have uh, clothed in rags of remembered scripture text. His subconscious is tainted by the old texts, mm -hmm. making his even his inside. Ah, yes, I also think that uh, the reference to the tainted text. 109. Oh, 109, yes. And that, that's very Rousseauian, if you can say. <laughs> very Rousseau. No, 108, actually, the last paragraph, which begins with 108. Uh, but he gives away the game, the mm -hmm. last paragraph on 108. Mm, yeah, it's yeah, 109. Yeah, I just took the last sentence there. Just Even if it's based on dreams or hallucinations, he actually experienced they had arisen from his subconscious, clothed in the rags of remembered scripture texts, no longer pure inner. Uh, yes, so the illusion is all the presumption. Uh, from uh, uh, Professor Price is that since it contains so many references to alter some texts, mm -hmm. it's not pure. No, no, no. Well, we have the same in Rousseau. The senses there is the only pure and is uh, supposed to be untainted by concepts, language, differences, analyzes. And we took that up in the text with how Tan, but the grafting show how it's going into each other. Mm. So there's no purity like that of the senses. It's untainted intention or insight. And, uh, this is also what Derrida looks at, the idea of I am present here now in my word and I seminate my words with this pure intention of the insight which is not tainted by words or scriptures. It's pure insight. So for uh, Price, the solutions to the Old Testament, they are completely poison. Yeah, it's a bit like poison, yeah. yeah. So, so it doesn't... <laughs> uh, maybe poison, venomous. <laughs> I would say venomous, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, venomous, so it's too, he doesn't try to defend them in any way. It's not... He doesn't think that they could actually be medicine. Mm -hmm. They're only problematic. One-sidedness of it. This is my sense, I get here. Uh, absolutely. Um, so he doesn't any in any way try to defend it. No. No, well, seem to be a bit fretful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like going to the pharmacy and you see their uh, uh, medicine with them, Daniel, Ezekiel, and Zechariah, uh, but uh, they are uh, with the uh, big. No, it's actually you, did, you wouldn't not find them in even a pharmacy, you find them in a normal store where you find uh, topak. Oh, yeah, with mixed mm -hmm. guns. Mm -hmm. They are Daniel, Ezekiel, and Zechariah, mm -hmm. they are death, so to say, for uh, Professor. Oh, Price. yeah, yeah. So they are absolutely not, not even a place for pharmacy. No, they are, no. They are so strong. Drugs. But if you read the pharmacy example, the pharmacist would never say to you, hello, Kala, that is actually poison you're taking now. Mm. It's, it's coming from the beginning from maybe snake venom or something like that, or mm. which is not really uncommon. Mm. Well, quite a great text, uh, in a way, and uh, I like this unveiling. Look at that. It surely is cracked off. And if you take it out like that, mm. you have some folds, and they will disappear as you fold more. So there is a hiding, mm. but it brings a greater complexity. So no longer can that original fold be seen, but you get a new complexity. Mm. That was very good. And he, he discussed also this passage from Revelation chapter 9, uh, 19. 
<laughs> no, this will also discuss why there is this name on his thigh. <laughs> Since I know, but I don't know yet myself, but why on thigh? Thigh, 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 thigh. Not thigh, but thigh. Yeah. There's a name written. This, this one. Mm. Do I have a theory why the name is written there? Mm. No, sorry. Mm. It's a hard not to crack. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But there is at, at least there is this Kekramen on uh, a name written, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which um, is like the archetyping of the Rida. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. The arc writing in my take is both the idea of that should be something original and it is, but at the same time it isn't. Mm. I, I did like the arc writing when I started with that. Um, so you could um, also say about the 9666. Um, here <clears throat> uh, to make it even clearer, uh, the 666 was here. There, um, <coughs> that this is to say it is the Antichrist, it, mm. would, uh, it would be an example of essentialism, mm -hmm. and we, we in the readers. Uh, what was the book now again? Um, Dissemination? No, it was the uh, another book mm. where he actually crosses out the word is. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yes. it shows itself that you, uh, that this would be very under to emphasize the word is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the second term, by definition, it is the Antichrist. Mm. Like it cannot be referent anymore. Mm -hmm. Which he actually writes is not a reference. I think the Deridian take, in my view, uh, something can only be a reference if it is fully the thing. Mm. If it's not fully the thing, it cannot refer. And then this, you will have a dichotomy. This is a preview of my paper and that will be published in January mm -hmm. next year, 2024. Great. Right. And uh, there I have. Yeah, I will not go uh, no, that, no. but I will show you one thing, what I mean. Uh, I have this same thing here, let me see. Surature, mm. this is the Deridian. Underwrapped. <laughs> Surature, <laughs> and you see there, that crossing out. So yeah, yeah. And here you see the word is, yeah. is crossed out. Indeed. And it's quotation from Derrida's book of grammatology. Mm, of grammatology. Uh, yes. So you see, this, so to say, proves the price is not the Derrida. No, no, no. But to some extent, yeah, yeah. Uh, not completely. He's no, not no, no, no. Yeah. No. But that makes it good because then we can take it further. Mm. We, we have a lesson to learn. Mm. Yeah, not bad. We could perhaps end there, if you wish. Yeah, sure. Why, well, thank you very much, Kalen and all for participating. Have a very beautiful day, morning, or afternoon, wherever you are. Bye-bye for now.